Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and my review for Skyfall, widely regarded as one of the best Bond films, certainly in recent years, and many people saying Bond was back on track after the perceived failure of Quantum of Solace, not that I ever agreed with that. Certainly, this is the film that gets Bond back to the recognisable figure that we know from, well, yeah, all those original films. It has all of the elements you would expect from a traditional Bond film, but takes those elements and it does something with them. It, it adds drama and character arcs, development, it's got themes, it's got everything, it's, yeah, let's get into it. As is the case with all of the Craig Bond films, we get a really cracking opening set piece. We get this chase in which Bond is chasing down this hitman who has stolen a computer drive that has all the names of undercover MI6 agents. So obviously it's imperative that they get that back at all costs. And Bond is pursuing this guy all across the city, onto a train, they're fighting on top of a moving train. It's it's quite incredible, to be honest, the, the whole set piece there, stuff that's done, the, the stuff with the, the digger when he pulls the carriage apart and yeah just the fact that these two guys are fighting on top of a moving train and M has to make a decision uh, which is for, for Money Penny, who we don't know is Money Penny at the time, to take a shot uh, hopefully hitting the, 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 yeah, the assassin but unfortunately hits Bond. M knows that that could be uh, you know, uh, the case, she knows that that's the risk but it's a risk she has to take. Bond gets hit and then we're into our opening theme song. So yeah, it, it's right off the bat, we set up a lot of high stakes for these characters. So we have this kind of surrogate mother-son relationship between Bond and M, which has been set up in the previous films. And here, it's really put to the test, right in the opening, because of a decision that M makes. And that decision, is going to feed throughout the rest of this film. Uh, you know, the, the choice that she makes and the ramifications of those are going to be felt throughout the whole film. Because this is a film really about loyalty and sacrifice and allegiance. Uh, who do you choose to pledge your allegiance to? And when that allegiance is tested, uh, when things go wrong, do you turn on the person that you've pledged your allegiance to? Or do you accept the consequences of what that allegiance carries with it. We get that in the excellent, excellent villain of Silver, played by Javier Bardem, who is very much like Alec Trevelyan in GoldenEye, is, is a former MI, MI6 agent. So he's, you know, he's that kind of flip side to Bond, a mirror image, so to speak. Trevelyan was a bit more pantomime, a bit more traditional Bond villain-esque, you know, very megalomaniacal. Uh, this time around, we get very personal stakes. We have a, a man who is driven by the need for revenge against, again, his surrogate mother figure in M. So you've got these, these two agents who, as I say, are, are both the flip side of each other. They've both been loyal to M, they've both pledged their allegiance to M, but they feel like M has made decisions that kind of betrays that allegiance. And the question is, how do these two different agents handle that? They handle it in different ways, you know, that, that, that one carries on pledging their allegiance, has that loyalty, recognises that, that was all, those consequences were always a, uh, a possibility, so to speak, given the line of work they're in. And then another one feels abandoned, feels betrayed. And, and you can sympathise with. You know, there's, there's a scene in this film when uh, Javier Bardem's character, Silva, he's been caught and he's in a prison and he reveals just the extent of the damage that has been done to him as a result of a decision that M made. When we see that scene, you can really sympathise or empathise with this guy. You know, you can never condone what he does, but you understand how he got there. The opening title song is one of the best. I think when Adele is on form, she nails it. So the plot revolves around this disc and getting it back, getting back the information that was taken by this assassin. And the question for Bond is, does he, does he come back to work or does he 
carry on being dead because he, he is presumed dead and he goes off for months. He kind of drowns his sorrows, uh, gets drunk quite a bit, deals with the pain of having a gunshot wound. So yeah, the question is, will he come back? And of course the answer to that is yes. Uh, when there is a terrorist attack on MI6, uh, which kind of reminds me of the scene in The World Is Not Enough, it brings him back from the dead, so to speak. Again, resurrection being another theme throughout this film. Uh, it's even a line that is dropped by Bond at one point when he's asked what hobbies he has and he, he says, yeah, resurrection. And this really is a film about him coming back from the dead, you know, figuratively speaking. Uh, he, he's, he's essentially a dead man. If he wanted to, he could walk away from it all, live a life of, of peace. But no, he, you know, he comes back from the dead, essentially. And it's, it's because of that loyalty that he has to MI6, to M, and yeah, his duty to his job. We get so much in this film with regards to the character of Bond, so much more than I think any other Bond film has done. To be quite honest, possibly more character development in this film for Bond than we've had across the entirety of the Bond films put together. You know, we get to see uh, stuff from his, his personal history. You know, we go, go to his uh, family home, which is the skyfall of the title. The climax of the film plays out there. Oh yeah, we learn a little bit about his parents. We get a look inside the man, you know, what drove this man to become who he is and knowing that he lost his parents. And yeah, it's just a little story that we get from Albert Finney's character, who's really great, by the way. He pops up towards the end of the film as an old family friend, helps him and Emma out against Silver and his men. Uh, and yeah, it just it provides a few little tidbits about Bond when he was a child. Stuff that we just, like I say, we just don't get in regular Bond films. Uh, you know, it's one of the, the things that I really love about the Daniel Craig era, the fact that they are willing much more willing to humanize this guy and show us who he is under the skin. This is certainly the best looking Bond film. Roger Deakins, I've said it many times before, he's my favorite cinematographer. The guy is just a genius. He's absolutely at the top of his craft. He just knows, knows how to make anything look beautiful. Some standouts, particularly the fight scene in China when Bond finally catches up with the assassin, uh, fighting in silhouette. Uh, some might argue that it's just overly artistic, but hey, you know what? Why not make it look beautiful? The stuff around Bond's house when Silver shows up and they, uh, yeah, everything kicks off and the, the fi fire starts raging. And Deacons does really well with with blacks and oranges. Um, and yeah, he did that very very recently. Uh, to a great extent in 1917. Every frame he does is a painting when, when you watch a movie that he's shot. So we get three new additions to very familiar roles here. So we are introduced to both uh, Moneypenny and Q in this film, uh, you know, really kind of putting those Bond traditional elements in. I love both of the actors that they choose for this. I think Ben Wishaw is Definitely my favourite Q. I mean, he's only the third one that we've had, but in this role, he feels like a proper, genuine character. He's not just someone who's there to give Bond gadgets. Uh, at one point, he even jokes about that. He doesn't feel like a gimmick the way that he has in pretty much the entirety of, of the Bond run, to be honest. Naomi Harris plays uh, Moneypenny. As I say, we don't find out that she is Moneypenny until the end of the film, but I, I like the dynamic they set up there between her and Bond. It has that kind of flirtatiousness of previous Bond films, the, you know, the relationship between Bond and Moneypenny, but brought into the 21st century, obviously. You know, we've, we've got this woman who is a dedicated agent within her own right. Uh, we see her in the field at the beginning of this. We see what makes her come out of the field, you know, the choices you have to make. Much more believable strength to her character than we've previously seen. As much as I liked Samantha Bond in the role throughout Pierce Brosnan's tenure, yeah, I, I, I'm very happy with Naomi Harris in this role. And finally, we get Ray Fiennes coming in as the replacement for M. This being, of course, 
Judy Dench's last outing, certainly as a living version of M anyway. I know she, she does get a bit of a cameo uh, in uh, Spectre that kind of gets the ball moving in a big way on that film. Uh, but certainly as a, as a living, breathing character, this is her last outing. And it's a very poignant one. It's a very personal one. As I say, her connection to both Bond and the main villain really drives this story, really kind of pulls you into everything that's going on. And I think to take her out in this one the way they do was the right way to go. Because the stakes are high, you know, the stakes are high throughout this film. And I think to, to not have her die at the end of the way she does, it would kind of pull the rug out, I think, from underneath those stakes. It would be like, okay, we're back to equilibrium, you know, we go back to the status quo. Whereas, no. To kill her off the way they do it's like those stakes were real and they had consequences um, and i think also it kind of brings bond to the end of this three film journey in which he's become the man that that we know from previous bond films it's taken three films to get us there but i just see a problem with that i, I think you know people aren't created overnight they don't become who they are overnight we get as i say ray fines who again really good character in his own right someone who comes across as a bit of a bureaucrat for most of the film until we realize actually you no know, this is a guy who is willing to get hands on who is willing to go to bat as well for bond and the team and yeah it's just a guy who's who's very noble a man of his word and has principles and obviously towards the end of the film right well, in the last few moments we realize he is indeed the replacement for M. I couldn't think of anyone I'd rather be there, to be honest. Love Ray Fiennes, does a great job in this, and I think the character is brilliantly written. We get a Bond girl in this who, rather heartbreakingly, is killed by Silver. It's like, normally with a lot of Bond girls, even ones that come to a, a sticky end, it's it's like, I don't know, you expect it, and there's, there's not that much emotion there. You know, I think of Terry Hatcher in Tomorrow Never Dies. It's like, yeah, whatever. She's barely a character. This woman, Severin, she, she does, to be honest, she doesn't get that much more screen time, I don't think, than what Terry Hatcher's character got in Tomorrow Never Dies. But the, the setting up of the character is handled so much more beautifully that when she cops it, I genuinely feel sad for this woman this because you know when you learn about her character she's essentially a slave she's trapped in bondage under under uh, silver at first it looks like she's she's in on everything that she's part of silver's plan but you realize start to realize actually she's held against her will she's under the thumb of silver and she's just a toy to him she's just something that he plays with and discards you know like she's nothing and it just yeah to learn about her and, and learn the situation she's in and see the promise of freedom that you see with, with Bond coming into her life. See this hope within her that Bond might be the one to be able to get her out. And then when actually he's quite ineffectual at doing so and Silver just caps her, it's, yeah, it's a genuinely moving moment. It's very sad. I think Skyfall is a perfect Bond film. It's about as perfect as you can get with a Bond film. I'd say it's up there with Casino Royale. And I have no choice really but to give it five out of five. I just think there's a lot of meat on its bones. It deals with stuff in a much richer, deeper way than, than the majority of Bond films, which, I, as I say, is, is, is kind of a trait of the Craig era. I have done... A video essay on Skyfall over on my other channel, The Movie Evangelist. So if, you, if you're not done listening to me talk about this film yet, then please do head on over to The Movie Evangelist and look up my essay, uh, video essay that I did on Skyfall. So what do you think of Skyfall? Please leave your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button already, please do so. Hit that notification bell as well to make sure you receive updates about my latest uploads. And do check out my Patreon if you've not already. Check out what perks there are there available. Uh, yeah, like I say, thank you for watching. Until next time, cracking.